poor, but I'll still explain to you what the concept is. The concept of TCP state state bypass. TCP state bypass. What does it mean? And where do we use it? Say for example, you don't have one PIX in your company. You have a company, let's, let's do this here. You have two firewalls, FW1, FW2, connected to the internet. Right? Your traffic is going through two firewalls, two different ISPs. This is one ISP, this is one ISP, this is the cloud they connect up to. And you are to try to you are trying to talk to this server right here. So your packet that is coming out, say from this firewall, it'll pass from here, go through this firewall, a connection table will be set up on which firewall? Firewall one. Right? So your SYN packet goes out. Say your SYNAC also comes back this way. So your connection table is completely set. Then you set another packet from here. It'll go to the destination. But one of the replies when it comes back in, it comes back from which firewall? Two. Firewall two. It comes back in from a different firewall. Will it, is it gonna take this packet? No. This packet is going to be dropped. Now this is not usually what you do. In usual circumstances, you will not have something like this. But in case you have something happening like this, that connection is going through one firewall, coming back through a different firewall. For a certain type of connection. Maybe the ISP, that whatever server you are trying to reach, is reachable on this direction from here. And for him to come to you, he has a better path to come in. How, in this case, will you make sure that this communication is not distorted? In this case, what you do is something known as TCP state bypass. You tell the firewall specifically in an access list saying traffic going from R1 to whatever PC 200 1.1.1. For it, you set connection parameters to TCP state bypass means for this connection do not check the connection entries let him come back in you'll do it on both firewalls so for this kind of traffic you will not teach treat this traffic as a normal tcp traffic you will treat this separately and let the connection come back in from here so the traffic which comes in he does not care if this has a sin packet or not if it has a SYN packet, it will let him in. If it matches the access list, it will let him in. It does not matter which port number, which. It's a dangerous thing to do, obviously. It's a dangerous thing to do. But if you don't have any option and you're using something like this, you'll use this TCP state bypass option. There's a, there's a, I think, if we allow document. All the, the one which you specify in the access list. TCP state bypass. To configure it is easy. See, this is the thing, right? Your traffic is going out from here, but it coming, it's coming back from the other side. How do you prevent this from happening? Create a class map, match access list bypass. What is access list bypass? It will be an access list which Majors the exact traffic going from your R1 to that PC, whichever you want to make sure that the connection does not break. And then policy name, map, whatever, call the class. Set connection, remember set connection? Advanced options. Here I only had one option of TCP map, but you also have another option called TCP state bypass. And apply the service policy. That's all you have to do. If you do that, it's done. There you go. TCP state bypass. Just enable TCP state bypass for this connection. Do not do it for all your traffic. Do it for the traffic that is important to you. 
see here he creates that access list going from 10.1.1.0 to anywhere right 10.1.0 is somewhere here so any traffic leaving this interface even if it comes back from this side does not matter because that will be allowed to come back different ISPs they're connected through different ISPs what this both here both here because it might come out from here and come back again from the other side so you have allowed both sides both it both this guy also and this guy because you never know some traffic may go from here some traffic may go from here it will come back from here come back from here so allow basically this traffic to come in from both directions TCP state bypass okay that is one it's called asymmetric routing not usually used usually you will not use something like this usually when you have two ISPs one will be used for backup one will be used as your primary ISP this will always create problems there's, uh, yeah no here no there's no BGP use this is not BGP this is a default route towards the ISP default route towards the ISP BGP is not used when you connect from your house to the internet do you use BGP no. you just have a default route towards the ISP if you have two ISPs even you will have two default routes one with a lower administrative distance one, one with a normal administrative difference so all will go through this but if this goes down the other side will come up or you could have that SLA monitoring that will monitor this one link completely so if this link goes down, he'll move on to the second link. BGP you only use if you have a network inside and you want this network to be hosted on the internet. Plus you'll have two connections of the internet. Then you'll use BGP. If you have only one connection from the internet and you want to host something on the internet, you will just tell your ISP to have a static route towards your network. That will be okay. But if you have two ISPs now, you cannot tell both of them to have a static route because that will be redundancy one both of ISPs will have one network which will be the same so in that case you do what you do run BGP with this ISP as well as this ISP and then you share your routes will be shared everywhere so if this side goes down automatically this side will be used okay clear that is your TCP state bypass the other thing the last thing that we are going to be doing today yeah repeat it again sure see I'll, I'll do this on the diagram you have a company now usual circumstances no one does that but if in case your company has two ISPs so your t traffic some of the traffic is going this way some of the traffic is going this way you never know maybe incoming you're having this outgoing you having this right you configure it in a way that outgoing traffic is this side incoming is this way so in this case whatever traffic is going out from here right your sin packet goes out a connection entry is created for the traffic to come back in on which firewall this so if the traffic comes back into this firewall it will let him in the problem is that the traffic is not coming from here it's coming from a different firewall which one ASA2 traffic is coming back from ASA2 does it have a connection entry no doesn't have a connection entry so what you do is on this firewall right now I'm only talking about if this is outgoing and this is incoming problem is on this right incoming traffic is blocked on this firewall you say all right listen for this traffic traffic which is originated from 10.1.1.0 for this traffic TCP state bypass state bypass means does not matter see if this is a sin connection it won't be allowed to come in a sin will not be allowed to come in but a reply to a sin which can be anything else right he checks it here the packet says I was originated from inside the firewall does not know because it does not have a connection table but since you've told him state bypass means okay it was originated by inside and I've been told that this connection will be originated by inside because TCP state wave bypass so he lets him come back in okay but if there's someone else from here trying to come in using a sin packet will not be allowed to come only that specific, only that specific network and not a sin packet a reply to a sin either a sin ACK or an ACK 
or a normal traffic any normal traffic except for sin so no one will be able to create a connection from outside to this but a reply will come in okay clear good that is tcp state bypass the last thing that we are going to be doing is trace route through a trace route through a firewall let's see how this works okay first before we do that first we need to see how a trace route works does anyone here know how it works how does a trace route work how do you get the route to the final destination if right now If I trace route a dot a dot a dot it, what is it going to give me? All the hops from here until a dot it. So the first hop is this, then the second hop is this, then the third hop is this, the fourth hop is something else. How does this router, my NIC card, know all the hops until the destination? How does it work? Nothing to do with ARP. Nothing to do with ARP. Check this out. My PC is right here. With the NIC card connected to my router, which is 172.16.2.200. This, right? Then, which is connected in turn to whatever, say 121.3.4.6. Connected in turn to. 160.2.5.6 finally connected to the final 8.8.8 TTR. TTR how it works is it sends out a packet trace route sends out a packet UDP packet 33434 33464 the range of the port numbers in the destination is this uh, any one of these values will be used as the port number for UDP for trace route right but the problem with this packet not the problem is the character is TTL of this packet is only one yes. time to live is one the packet is ping is uh, to destination what the packet is destined to a dot a dot eight so the router looks up a dot eight looks at the route that he's going to 8.8 then forwards it to this interface now when he's forwarding it he needs to reduce the TTL he needs to reduce the TTL by 1 let's let's leave here let's see what happens here first I don't want to confuse you here so let's see when the packet reaches here right 8.8.8 router looks up the 8.8 looks up 8.8 is going from which interface this interface he moves it to that interface and the TTL is reduced becomes what? Zero. So the packet dies. When the packet dies, the router's responsibility to tell the PC that the router dies. How does he tell the PC? By sending an ICMP unreachable. Tells him, hey, the ICMP is unreachable. The router counts the total number of the PC counts the total number of unreachables. How many did he get? One. In this reach unreachable, will it will there be the IP address of this router? Yes. Because the source will be used as the IP. So the first hop is two dot two hundred. Then what it does is see the first died, then he sends again. But this time he doesn't use a TTL of one. He uses a TTL of 2. The packet goes here, checks where to leave from, crosses this hop, TTL becomes 1. He reaches the other router. 
checks where to leave from ttl becomes again zero the packet dies what does this router do send icmp message back again will the source be included yes so the next hop is 4.6 receives it then he needs to send one another one right what is the ttl this time three and this port numbers also keep on changing so one packet is three three four three four the other is three three four three five depends it's random numbers which he chooses among these right sends the packet first half cross ttl becomes two for the other half crossed ttl becomes one he reaches this guy ttl dies he sends out another unreachable with his hop in it so the third hop is 160.2.5.6 then sends another ttl out so this keeps on continuing now ttl will be four he creeps on increasing the ttl the moment he increases the ttl he'll always get what the next hop is until it reaches the final destination <coughs> Two fifty-five. If uh, someone we don't know how many routers or how many is in their cloud is okay. there, so if, how can if it is reaches more than that? Two fifty-five. More than that. Router. There's no way our router will be two fifty-five hops away. <laughs> There'll be no communication if it's coming from where we don't know. The maximum hops on the internet is thirty. Thirty. Yeah, more than thirty, it does not accept the route is considered invalid. 30 is the maximum for trace route on the internet 30 30 is more than enough if you have more than 30 the connection will be very slow so they consider the route dead 30 hops is a lot on the internet there's 30 autonomous systems that you're crossing wow it's a lot because airtel will have one address vodafone will have one address so you're crossing one isp at a time to reach from one place to another. But then that is the thing that who does reach this one server? Do the most servers combine in the same IP address? Yeah. Whole and ISP with one. Know. Yes. But this is the total hops that you take. One router, then you go another router, then you go another router, then you go another router, and so on. So how do you combine it in a just one IP address? So how do you combine all of the servers and give it one IP address? It's done using a, uh, see, with BGP, you can have one autonomous system. One autonomous system will have one scheme of IP addresses. It will have one whole network. 192, say 192.1.30. slash 24 will be theirs. So one router will be dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five. But the first three subnets will be the same. Yeah. Eight dot eight. Yeah. Yes, because one thing I know is there will be many many servers throughout the world. For 8.8? For this It's done using NAT load balancing. I taught you that in SNRS. NAT load balancing. One address on the other on the outside. Inside you have a couple of servers, four or five servers, responding to one IP address. So one packet comes to 8.8, .8, goes to the first server. The second packet comes to 8.8, .8, goes to the second server. The third comes to 8.8, .8, goes to the third server. NAT load balancing. So you can have four servers on the inside, but from the outside just one. Everything comes into that one and goes, multiplies into the others. Okay. So that is the job for today. Now the problem with the through the firewall is, let's have a look through the firewall now. Why is it getting stopped? Last packet will go TTL4. It'll reach the final destination. He will not get a destination unreachable back. So he knows that communication is finished. So he counts that hop, names it as 8.8. .8. Yeah, every time. TTL1, TTL2, TTL3, TTL4. If he doesn't get a reply, he knows that he reaches the destination. So he says trace route complete. Doesn't get an unreachable back, yes. That means it reached. If it doesn't get an unreachable, that means it reached the final destination. Okay? Clear? Now, through the firewall, the question is, I have the firewall here, right? My scenario right now is this is R1, this is R2, right? My packet 
this guy is trying to trace route in. Why is it getting stopped? What is getting stopped? Outside to inside. This is outside, right? And this is inside. How do I let this happen? How do I allow it to come in? Access list. Let's create that access list on the picks. But from inside to outside, it should be allowed. Inside to outside is allowed, but ICMP unreachable. Right? ICMP unreachable is coming from outside to inside. In that case, I'll have to allow ICMP to come in. First, let's try outside to inside on the ASA. Access list, INF, permit what? Which protocol? UDP. UDP. It'll send out, I'll be sending back ICMPs. But what will I receive? UDPs. Permit, UDP, from source any, destination any. Whoever is trying to trace out wherever. Right? Equal to, I will not say equal, but I'll say range. 33434. Three, four. Sure. 464. Any UDP in this range should be allowed. Okay. Access group. INF in interface. Let's try now. R2 to R1. Do you see any error? It's working now. But how many hops is it showing you? But there should be how many hops? It's actually two. One hop from here and then the final hop. Two hops. But it's showing what? And which address is he using? 10, 11, 11, 1. The firewall's address is 192.1.20.10. He's not showing that. Why? This is exactly why I wanted to teach you this. Because the firewall by default does not document a firewall by default does not decrement TTL so this UDP packet that comes in it goes in here goes straight up to R1 the TTL is not decremented so that TTL1 remains so that the first hop it gets is R1. He gets, the destination is reached, so he thinks it's fine, everything is okay. For trace route, firewall is transparent. Why? Because by default, no one should know where your firewall is. No one should know where your firewall is. So even if someone trace routes, they will not know where the firewall is. It acts as a transparent device in the middle. It does not decrement any TTL of any packet which is going through it. Okay? So it acts as a transparent router. A transparent router. Now, I don't want this. I want to see this. You know? I want to see this. Why? Because I don't want security. I just want to see if this work. So how do I do that? Through same. Set connection. Advanced options. Conf T, class map, this will be for trace, match any, policy map, global underscore policy, class trace, set connection, decrement TQ. By default, it's off. I'm saying turn it on. Right, so let's try now. Done. Now you're getting 10, 11, 11, 10. Why 10, 11, 11, 10? Why not 192.1.20.10? Because I told you TTL is decremented when you cross the router yes. and reach this interface. So this interface replies. Here the TTL is not decremented. When you cross the router, go to the inter other interface, then the TTL is taken off. That's why he sends you a reply from 10.11.11. You wanna have a look, my oh my, that's good. My, this is also on, see? Destination unreachable is thrown off. 
first uh, UDP goes this is which port number 33437 33438 33439 and then a reply comes and if you want to check the TTLs also you should be able to check it TTL is one. And for this, TTL is one because the destination on each is coming through. Okay, you understand this? How it works? What? ICMP. ICMP unreachable. When the TTL dies. The router is responsible for sending it back. It's just like in a post office. When you send a letter and one of the post office receives the letter, but the address says, say, Kohog or some place which is unknown to the post office. What does the post office do? He checks the source, sends the packet back. Right? That's exactly what this does. If the packet does not reach, it dies. Now the post office guy is responsible to tell the source that, hey, the packet died. So it sends an ICMP unreachable, saying, hey, the packet has died. The second one should be with the TTL value too. Which one? Okay. This is one. What is the destination? TTL should be higher, yes. Where am I monitoring? Question is where am I monitoring because here by the pack, I'm monitoring here, right? By the time the packet reaches here, the TTL is reduced to one. That's why it says one. If I monitor here, the TTL will be two, three, because from here it starts, right? Pinging from here. So if you do it from here, do it from here. Still one. Hmm. Two. The first package did not go through, that's why. Should be two, then it reduces to one. and then it goes in. and it receives an unreachable yeah so the rest of the packets will be two this first will be one then it'll be two right the first one one will go here when it gets a reach unreachable back then two so two will be the last one which he's gonna send because two hops is the last hops he will have okay this is good but can I ping from R1 can I trace out from R1 I can go to 192.1.20.10 and that's it. Why? Because the ICMP from R1 is not allowed. It's a separate packet that is coming in. ICMP from R1 is not allowed to come back in. So how do I allow this in? Same access list. Permit ICMP from any to any, but which one? I have many, there's also one called trace route. The one which is used in trace route. So allow the trace route ICMP to come back in. Check now. it INF right is it sending it back sending unreachable back right let's allow unreachable also access list INF permit ICMP any any unreachable
okay because the unreachable is coming back in and it is allowed okay is this clear clear the only thing i wanted you to see here is the decrement ttl and you know how to use it now you know how to use those advanced options which ones policy map global underscore policy and class what was it called class trace and then you have some options we checked these options already we know these we know inspect priority police these are qos ones and these are inspect ones the only thing that was left was set so set only one option which is connection and then you have certain values which ones decrement ttl we did random sequence number i showed you and advanced options also we did what these other ones are these are just total number of connections that are allowed these are the number of connections allowed what do i mean by that how many connections are allowed through the firewall how many embryonic means connections in which the sin has gone out he still waiting for sinac it's called embryonic connections per client how many connections per client should be allowed right and time out parameters if a connection is waiting for some time how long do you have to wait for it the default values for these if you want to check is right there in your show run okay these are the default values half closed connections sip and this you don't need to know this is your x late 3 hours for your x late right connections 1 hour for a default connection a normal connection parameter half closed is 10 seconds udp is only allowed for how long 2 minutes icmp 2 seconds 2 seconds so when you allow udp connection table in the connection table udp connection is only allowed for 2 minutes but tcp is allowed for how long half closed means it's closed from one end it's not closed from the other end 10 minutes okay and icmp because it's a useless protocol it's only 2 seconds so that's why when you inspect ping you won't be able to see it in the connection table by the time you do show connection your speed is so slow that 2 seconds it goes away so you'll never be able to see the connection if you're fast enough you will be when you allow inspection of things in the connection table okay clear two things we did today what are those two things we did we did tcp maps used for what anything which has anything to close to do with tcp tcp options tcp checks and tcp headers is right here and we also did connection parameters in which you can do decrement ttl random sequence number and link this to the tcp map so everything that is applied is applied here this is just a supplement of set connection which feature in set connection advanced options here you have two either tcp map what is the other one the other ones you know stat connection other one is decrement ttl random sequence number then the other ones which ones the default limit and all the other different kinds of stuff which is these ones these are just values how many connections per per client and all the other kind of stuff also all in here okay clear that finishes your order the policy okay okay now again this is not this is just the tip of the iceberg again 
But what is important for you is to know the framework of how it works. Not exactly each protocol, but the framework. So you should be flexible enough to apply it to any protocol that is given to you. I showed you HTTP, SMTP, FTP, right? And IPsec. Tomorrow, if you're thrown away with any other protocol, you should be able to use it based on the framework. That's why we call it a framework. They have included everything inside this framework. You can match on anything that you want. I showed you how to match on torrents yesterday. That's your homework for the weekend, by the way, to block torrents through that picks that you connect. Okay. Do you get this? Clear? That will be all for today.